all these three days event. Um, my name is Carlos Santana. Um, that's my Twitter handle. Handle. Um, handle. Um, going to talk about web apps. Um, short introduction, a little bit about myself. Um, I work for IBM. Um, I don't work. Um, I only work on open source projects, so I'm working full time open source projects. I um, recently um, had committership or maintainer of Apache Cordova, the same thing as PhoneGap, that's what I'll be showing today. Um, been there for 11 years, um, joined Software Group um, in the summer, and I've been working around mobile web uh, type of things. And uh, my role is just to build the community, influence the community, work with open source projects. So that's usually what I try to do, uh, mostly into developer workflows. Um, so I tend to go to a lot of uh, meetups around the Triangle area. So we have a uh, and GDG, which are in Google Plus. Um, so I don't know how many other Google Plus um, groups are there. I don't even know what one. Uh, but yeah, um, the community is great. Um, before any anyone doing web development, JavaScript, kind of web dev, um, guys doing mobile uh, with phones, mobile web apps, and things like that. Okay, so a good crowd. Um, so going to um, who wants to see like a bunch of slides and no code, or who wants to see like live demos not working and see code and how stuff we can make it work? Yeah. Who votes for slides? Let's make it work. Uh, who votes for coding and trying to see demos and try to see like code working on mobile and all that good stuff that never works on demos? Okay. Good. <laughs> um, so because I'm going to say this are um, kind of bad slides and I'm bad doing slides. I'm better like doing demos and making stuff work. So. But anywho, I'm going to talk today about two problems that um, uh, I've faced and I tried to attempt to, to fix. One was automating the web development workflow, kind of like that JavaScript code ones, deal with the CSS, concatenation, minification, all those things around JavaScript, and then building something, and then open the browser, and then refresh, and then going back, and then that workflow. I wanted to automate that. There's tools that can help with, with that. The other one was automating um, hybrid development or like native development, um, cross-platform mostly. So you're working today with iOS, Xcode, or Android IDE, and then BlackBerry 10, and Firefox OS, and Windows Phone 8, and Windows 8, WinJS. You kind of get like how people do this. Well, I think people just deal with one at a time, and but there's folks that want to deal, want to build apps for all those platforms, but deal like with one single workflow where you can like edit a file. Uh, for this example, I'm just talking about web mobile apps running on native. So you change a JavaScript file, you change an HTML file, and rapidly you can see it working on your device or you're working on a simulator. And then you do a change and you see it again. So that's kind of the workflow that I was talking about. Um, so I complain a lot. So I realize since I'm in open source, um, uh, they're giving me enough time to like, well, fix it. It's broken, so I went ahead and I stopped complaining. I tried to fix it. Um, first, first problem problem was um, I was sitting. I work in IBM, so we are a big fan of Dojo Toolkit. It's a JavaScript framework. If you're not familiar, um, nothing like jQuery or um, Angular. Um, but it has uh, recently. Um, adopted a MVC structure, it's called DAP. Um, when I started this, there was no documentation, no tutorials, so it was this little folder living in this big library. Um, so that was kind of the problem I was facing. Uh, one of the problems, not problems, but difficulties with Dojo is kind of building it. It has a lot of complexity to it, so it's not as easy as running um, Oglify.js on all your JavaScript files and then Concatenating, so it has a complex build process. So I tried to automate that, um, and I created a few examples um, um, using the framework. And some folks are having the same problem, so they're benefiting and just putting everything on GitHub. So anything that I will talk today is in GitHub. The slides, the code, everything. Um, 
and open it. You guys are free to open issues, pull requests, everything you're, you want. So that was the first problem. I said two problems. One was how do I deal with JavaScript? So sometimes you don't get to choose the JavaScript framework. Sometimes you're working with a client, working with a company, working with a legacy code, and you don't get to say, well, I want to work with Polymer because it's cool. Well, nobody, they're not using Polymer. Or the client says, I have a code base and it's built on jQuery 1.8, and you're like, can I when I use AMD and there's no AMD? So um, that's the situation for that one. Um, Apache Cordova, um, uh, Cordova, Apache Cordova is the open source project. So that's the project I, I I'm, I'm a committer maintainer maintainer. Um, I didn't realize that I was going to get. I thought I was going to get like write permissions to the repo and I can write everything that I want. But it's kind of the opposite. I get now to like review pull requests and merge them and tell the people to review them and then which issues are more important and less important and having meetings and such things, which are fun. Um, but it wasn't my expectations. But uh, that's one of the things um, about open source. And I'm gladly to mm -hmm. afterwards to see if somebody's interested in getting to open source, either as a contributor or open sourcing something. Um, New version of Cordova. Um, anyone heard of Cordova or heard PhoneGap? You guys familiar with PhoneGap? Who knows what PhoneGap is? Okay, a few, a few guys. Um, you can check it out, uh, PhoneGap.com or Cordova.io. It's kind of the same. Uh, the only difference is PhoneGap has a build service where you can build, you can compile your iOS app or your app on the cloud. Cordova is kind of the core, the open source core that allows you to create JavaScript. HTML5 apps and then package them as, na as native apps. Um, we support iOS and Android, the most popular ones, BlackBerry 10, Windows Phone 8. Um, I'm excited about Firefox OS. I got I got a device. Somebody wants to see a Firefox OS phone. Um, it's, it's, it's there it's as an asterisk because it's not fully supported. Um, all the plugins are not there. And I think I saw last night or yesterday uh, a pull request for from the Ubuntu guys. So they want to build um, phone gap apps. Uh, they want to add Ubuntu support so you can have uh, Ubuntu phone um, and that. And then plugins. Um, so the version 3.x that we did a re restructure of the of the code base. Basically, um, you used to have like a, a hybrid app or phone gap app that has everything. So it was big. It has all the plugins. It has all the functionality. So now it's broken into plugins, and what we're doing is giving you the enough, like the packaging as the minimum when you build a web app. And then if you need a an API, a native API, then you add a plugin. Um, I put Chromium in there because the guys and in Google are working on the project. Um, I was, yeah, this week I was in Canada talking to them, and they put some plugins for um, Chrome package apps APIs or Chromium APIs. I have a few of them. So you're familiar with those. I'm not that familiar, but you're familiar with those that you're building um, Chrome extensions or Chrome package apps. Um, you can use them on iOS and Android at least. Um, so I have I have a video which shows a cool demo of that. Um, and and the flow. So it used to be like you had to download all these files and read all the IDEs and everything. Now it got condensed into an NPM package. So that helped a lot. So the this kind of the flow of how you build a, a Cordova app or hybrid app, you just npm install it, um, and then run the different platforms, add the plugins, and emulate, and that's kind of cool. But um, it gets old after a while remembering what are all the steps. So um, Grunt JS is um, is a task runner built in JavaScript uh, with Node. Uh, any familiar what uh, Ant is or task runner? Um, so it's basically it's the same thing, but it's written in JavaScript. So it automate things. Uh, Cordova plugins. So um, Cordova plugins are available in plugins.cordova.io. So we're kind of building kind of a it's the same API. We're building with the same structure of FBM. Is um, a repository for plugins uh, for device API, access the file, uh, access the camera, the microphone. All those things are just basically plugins. Little little package plugins that you can add to your app and then you have the, that functionality. So we have the core ones, we have BlackBerry added ones, um, Chrome package app, they added those. 
Um, and since this is a, a GDG, I think a lot of people are familiar. With, uh, want to be to learn about what um, Google is doing with that. Um, more plugins. So these are the plugins I was mentioning. Um, these are the first set that they're working on, um, and it basically gives you the the capabilities of the Chrome package app on your Android phone and your iOS phone. So if you are working with web and you're doing Chrome package apps and you say like, well, I want to reuse that same code on, on my phone for for an app, that's that's the way to do it. So what sits behind that is just a lot of native code for Android and for iOS, but the API that you will use is just JavaScript. It's very simple. Um, Node.js. Um, any? Uh, do I need to explain what Node.js is, or we have? Uh, there is there somebody that knows what Node.js is? Oh so. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so basically, it's to it's to run JavaScript um, on the back end. Um, it's just JavaScript based. Is if you want to develop JavaScript, you want to run it on the back end, uh, not have a Java stack. You use Node.js and and it has the V8 engine, which is cool. Another thing that that Node.js is doing is how we're hacking. So a lot of people are doing JavaScript. So I can do this, I can do that. So um, there's um, I, I'm uh, Arduino based um, Tesla and Raspberry Pi. So you can run Node.js on on hardware. So does a lot of hardware hacking. I didn't mention Esperino, which is a Kickstarter project, uh, which is very cool. It's going to run the the runtime on the chip, uh, similar as Raspberry Pi, which is just Linux. Um, Node.js. So that's basically what I'm going to show today is Node.js tools. So if Node.js can inter interpret inter um, interpret JavaScript, then I can run JavaScript and Node will run it. Node has access to the file system and the process on my computer. So people that are like, well, one and one they put together, I'm not going to write a, a, a bash script and then write another one for Windows, uh, another CLI. So why don't we write like CLIs that work everywhere, on Linux, on Mac, and OS? So they started building these um, command line tools. NPM is one that already comes with Node. Um, it, it didn't used to come with Node. Uh, today people are like, well, I use NPM, duh. Well, using, using, uh, it, it wasn't like that before. Bower. Uh, it's a package manager, so basically it's uh, the, the tool or the CLI command line tool that allows you to fetch your front, front end packages like jQuery, like Angular, like Bootstrap, like SAS, like all these things that um, you don't have to go to a website to download a zip file, or go to another website, mm -hmm. download a zip file, or go to a download to check if there's a new version, just uh, give it a JSON file and then Bower will fetch it. Um, and download it. So that's that's kind of automating things, right? I'm just saying, uh, what is the banner process and automating it? Um, Grown JS, I think I mentioned it. So if you have a lot of tasks that you need to run in a certain order, um, just specify it in a, in a simple JSON file, and then Grown JS will run those tasks um, automatically. The beauty thing is, um, of those thing, of these things are more the community. This is something that anyone can build, but the community is putting packages on Bower, so making jQuery available. In Grunt, there's a big community of web developers sharing plugins, so it's a plugin system. If you want a task, you don't have to write a task if it's already available. Um, so there's basic uh, big library of um, tasks. Yeoman is something if you have, I, I tell folks this is kind of new, it's scout folding. It's kind of like if I want to uh, replicate a project structure, or if you guys are kind of doing the, your apps, you have two or three apps or prototyping, and you always like, put the half a JS mm -hmm. folder, and some another team calls that the script folder, and the other one JavaScript folder, and another team the lib folder. With web apps, you can have whatever directory structure you you want, um, but the your teammates need to agree, and then the, everybody needs to be on the same page. And if you want to change something, like there's there's arguments about like no call it lips or lips and other stuff. So Yaman allows you to create kind of a template um, for web projects, and it's based on Node.js. And what the, those templates are named are generators. So for people that are starting in web development or want to like dabble with something, um, I would bet that there's a generator dash go. Like you would type Yaman or Joe. Go and it will give you like 
the director structure that uh, um, the person be before me was talking about, it will give you what you need. And um, it will use Bower to fetch anything from the web and Grunt.js to give you a command line like run or compile. Um, so if you want to get started with AngularJS, there's one for that. Web app, um, there's one web app. There's, um, so there's many there out there to use. And then Cordova CLI, which I just show about the command line. So those are just tools right now that are just based on JavaScript. So the, the idea is that if you deal in your regular work scenario with JavaScript and you are you know, working with JavaScript all the time, then you don't have to switch context to like the build tools or the DevOps. Like everything is JavaScript from the beginning to end, so your productivity of your teammates and yourself increases, right? You don't have to change the language. You don't have to learn something new. It's just JavaScript runs here, runs here, runs on the back end, runs on the command line, runs on the browser. So at the end of the day, you're running the same code um, and it runs everywhere. Um, just have a little snippets of um, command line tools for those guys. Um, that um, don't know how to get started. Um, you Google Node uh, will give you binary. You download it, and then it's installed on the command line. That's very easy to install. Um, NPM, you don't have to worry about getting it. It comes with Node. And this, this applies to Windows, Linux, and, and Mac. I just happen to have a Mac. Um, Bower is another one. So these are the simple examples on NPM install dash G Bower. G is for global. So it will install it in your in your machine. So you, when you open a new terminal, you can type Bower, and then you have Bower. Or NPM, then you have NPM. Um, Grunt.js is a tricky one. Uh, people try to install NPM install manage G Grunt. Uh, that's the wrong one. It's Grunt-CLI. And if you run Grunt, um, and you, say, you see an error saying that it's not installed locally, that's OK. Um, it's me. Uh, the idea is that you can you grant you put grant in your project, so every every project can have the version of grant that they requires the dependencies. So grant CLI just check locally there's a grant and then run it. So it's kind of a shim. Uh, Yeoman um, is the generator I just explained. You just install it globally. Uh, npa install minus g Joe and you get it. Um, this is the generator um, I created. It's called Dude. Um, those are names are reserved. So I reserve Dude. Uh, someone, but someone in the office tried to give give it a name. So I started with the acronym, and then we start figuring out what you call it. So some people will call it like Dojo Unified Development Environment. Um, so, but it's not. It's just uh, Dojo now. But I'm I'm hoping that I can add more generators or more JavaScript framework. So um, I would not write them. So what I'm going to do is just um, use the generators that are already available. So you can create a Angular app and put it on a mobile device, or a web app and put it on a mobile device. Um, so the way to you install generators are generator dash and then name, Angular, web app, um, in this case, dude. And it'll give everything that you need. So. If you need to remember something, it's just install it. Uh, these slides are available online, so you don't have to remember. Um, upgrading software. So that's the beauty also of NPM. When you upgrade software, it's just running NPM update, and then your tools are updated. There's no need to go to the App Store or check for updates or websites. Everything is Node, and it's there. And uh, like I said, I'm, I'm going very slow on the slides. I don't want to talk about the slide, but I knew the. Just wanted to know if there's way people related to this stuff or not. So it, it's good to give a good introduction, saying, "Okay, I, I know there's Node and there's all these tools. I can get enough, so I can go web on the web and learn about them." So let's run some demos. Um, let me start my my uh, here. Um, any questions so far? Um, or show something running, and then we can ask questions. Um, so the idea is you have a terminal. Oh, that's not the wrong terminal. That's the wrong one. Start a new one. Already have like three tests, but we'll see. Let me see.
that okay? Yeah. Okay. Let's get out from here. Let's create a directory. So with Joe, Joe, man, you create a new directory. Let's call this dev um, fast. Go in there, and basically you type. Um, you can type that. I would ask you. Well, that's that's a good one. Um, if you type Joe, he would ask you for. That's the that's the guy. Yeah, man. I don't think he's pulling the finger. I, I hope <laughs> he's right hey, grabbing he's his hat. His, he's tipping his cap. Yeah, yeah. Um, so as you can see, I have a um, a few generators already. So I have um, a one for Cordova. I have one for Angular, Jekyll, Mocha, Web Apps. So there's two generators for for everything that you can imagine. Um, so if you want a shortcut, you can type just Joe Dude. And that's basically will ask you um, the name of the app. Right now, I just have um, the name of the app to make it very simple. Uh, next version, I'm going to add like what plugins do you want, what APIs do you want to add, and it will add it automatically. Um, but it's easy to edit the ground JS file. So if you do that, uh, what it's doing is it's already scaffold a template that I have, uh, replace some variables in some files, and it's going to npm. So it's running two two commands. It's running um, Bower install and npm install. So what is that? That's doing is installing the the dependencies. So installing everything that it needs from using Bower from the front end. Things like run on the browser, runs on the on the device, and then npm install are things that run on the back end or the command line. Um, so as you can see. NPM has dependencies and it will figure out all the dependencies until it gets everything. Um, I think I have some slides here that ex that explains that. Let me see. Yep. So I just run go do it and um, just ask the question of what you want to give that name. Um, you got do it is uh, what you get after that thing runs. So and it takes a while because it's um, Requires a lot of packages. I think it's almost done. So um, you don't have to do this all, all the time. Basically, you just do it once, and then you have your your project. And basically, you put in your source control um, using Git or GitHub or SVN or whatever, and that's the project you would share with everyone. Um, but to get started, that's typical the typical scenario. But um, I'm working at, at least with. The Cordova um, packages because they're they're quite big and um, we're trying to figure out how to exclude test cases or have two projects and that's something that I, almost all projects out there have. Let's see if it, if this is finished or I can explain what it did. Um, so this is what I was doing with Bower was installing the dependencies. So I have a one file. You put you have a bower.json file and you put your um, packages that you need. Um, in this case, I'm I'm pointing to GitHub, but you can have packages registered in Bower. So it's going to get uh, the different things that it needs for Dojo and and get them. But if you need jQuery or Angular, you don't even have to figure it out. Just just generate generator and it will have the right bower.json. It's just I was the one complaining that there was nothing uh, for for my specific problem, so I just created this one, and then then people can use it. Um, download the C the local CLI dependencies. So that's the npm install. Um, it's installing all the dependencies for the CLI command. The top three ones are kind of the the unique ones. So uh, we're using Uglify JS um, to compile Dojo, compile the JavaScript. Um, Grunt Dojo is a, um, a a Dojo task provided by someone else, so I didn't want to create it. If there was something out there in GitHub, I would not like replicate it. I would just improve it, send a pull request. But this one was working fine. Um, we sent a few box reports, and they fixed it. So it's better like that. Um, and that's an advice that I give folks: if you search in GitHub, you find something, uh, and it's active. Open an issue, send a pull request um, instead of like forking it and creating a, a copy that that then you don't contribute back. Um, and ground Cordova CLI does does personally I own that one, and and it was my first experiment um, with creating a ground plugin, 
and putting stuff on npm and it was very easy so um, if you're uh, wonder about how difficult it is to get stuff in npm it's it's very 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 simple um, so after that's installed everything gets downloaded let me see if that if that finished okay so it looks like it finished it has all all the stuff that we need I think this is a an old copy I use Sublime, but um, the idea is you don't. I haven't mentioned an IDE, so this is the same tools as previous that we're talking. You don't need an IDE. Um, that's kind of the advanced workflow that is trending right now. Is don't give me an IDE, just give me the raw tools, and we'll figure it out. And then you can use Veeam, Emacs. I use Sublime. I also have brackets, which is a good good one. Um, so this is finished, and. Um, the first thing that I do is just look at the ground ground JS file. Let's see if you guys can see this. And and this is looks very very familiar uh, if you have used the web app one. So this is based on uh, basic web app uh, that Ari Osmani and the other guys have created. So I just follow their pattern and 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 the only things that it has specific is is to Dojo and Cordova. And at the end, they usually put the ground tasks that you can run. Another way to figure it out, I think, is if I remember correctly, is ground ground, uh, ground dash dash help. That will give you the tasks available that you can run. But um, if you are lazy like me, um, I think we I always put like a a demo task. So if you type ground demo. Um, it's running all the tasks, so it's doing all this complex stuff that no one didn't know how to do well, not well, but it, they were not documented. Nobody had an example, so um, this is good because it, it would do the linting, um, it would do the compile. Um, uh, one thing that I changed was Dojo by default uses uh, Rhino. It's a JavaScript interpreter running in Java, so I uh, talked to some guys and they helped me. To run it on um, Node using Oglify JS, and that went from three minutes to ten seconds, really. And I was very happy and dancing and thanking them, because it was it was a pain to wait like three or four minutes just to compile something. Where if you take the other pro web projects, uh, just take seconds, milliseconds to run. So in this demo, what is what is happening is it's already done with the with the JavaScript and the web app. So um, at this time, it just finished creating a web app, and then it started creating a Cordova app or PhoneGap app. So it's running the, the CLI command line tool um, internally from the dependencies, not the global one. So it's just running the commands. I print the commands because they're useful. If you want to do them by, by, by hand in terminal, try things, you can do it. It's just Cordova create a project, Cordova platform add. So in this ground J, these examples, I just add iOS and Android, but you can ask, you can add BlackBerry 10, and if you're in Windows, you can add Win 8 um, and Windows Phone 8. Let um, me see where, how far it is. It will build, compile, prepare, um, and then it's running the emulator on Android, which happens to be a little bit sl more uh, slow. I think this is a previous version. Okay. So it will launch the, the simulator, um, and it will install the app. And it's the same app can run on iOS, I think. And that took, um, also there's a ground um, time base that will give you the timings of, if you want to look optimize your workflow, this give you all the timings on what are the tasks that, that took the most time. Um, so it looks like it was the, the build process took the most time, almost a minute, a minute there. Um, and that's it. I, I went with one, two commands, was able to create a web app um, from a particular JavaScript framework to um, 
creating an iOS and Android app, and this is as ready as it can be. I can just push it to the App Store and Google Play, and I can go home and I have an app um, in a few minutes. Um, let me see where we are. Okay, so that was that was the slide. That's what happened. I think I explained it. It did the lane thing. Uh, it built the web app. Um, it created Cordova project, a hybrid project. It added the platforms and the plugins. Um, in this case, I didn't have plugins, but uh, you can now comment. And then it built the native app, and they run the simulator. And that uh, and that took, um, I think it was two minutes. I think I said. Um, okay. So next, I'm going to go to the watch watch task, and that's where I wanted to get get to to the probably one minute to do a change on the JavaScript side or the HTML side, and in one minute have it in Android, which I think the, the Cloud Envy bit me like for 30 seconds, but <laughs> they only do Android. You can do here BlackBerry 10. You can do Windows Phone 8. You can do all platforms. So questions so far? Or everybody is kind of like, you lost me like halfway there <laughs> of like web app, Phone, mobile. Yeah. So I'm going to I'm going to do that one. Any more questions? That's that's the next step. I'm going to mm -hmm. modify the app. Yes. So Bower. Uh, let me explain npm is faster. npm manage packages for Node. So it manages Node packages, things that run in Node, package for Node, and register in M npm. But you can have stuff ready from Git. Bower, on the other hand, it downloads packages for the front end, nothing to deal with Node. So Bower is a, a, a utility that runs in Node, but just goes and fetches a JavaScript.js.min.js or or a CSS file. So Bower itself is a task running Node, but its job is to, to download the file that can be pushed to the browser. To the browser, and um, Took me a while to understand this, and and the reason is, on the browser you cannot have like multi dependencies. You either have one version of jQuery, I know you can have like multiple, but it's a pain in the butt. Or so usually you have like one CSS framework and one JavaScript library and one. In Node you can have dependencies within dependencies, so everything is sandbox. So you can have different npm packages running on your app, and their dependencies are different version numbers. So when you need uh, some node package, you can run in a certain version, but this utility depends on the same package but a different version. So that's sandbox, where it's such a browser that you have one runtime, one global. So when I was a beginner, I think that really bit me a lot was my, my company has got this basic proxy. All of this stuff is somewhere in the back room. Because each one of them, no one has got a different view. And proxy server, you know, pseudo does something else. And so once you get into this loop, you know, it does is a tremendous loop to somebody's doing something with proxy, and they have a laptop, the best solution is to go home and have a proxy. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. So, so one one um thing that they, they have done correctly and uh, we have helped is NPM has proxy settings and firewall settings and um, so if everything, all, all these utilities, and they do, so I picked utilities that they do, they piggyback on that NPM configuration. So if you can get NPM working with dash dash and some config file to build the proxy and it asks you your username and password, then Bower will use that same configuration to fetch it. Uh, Cordova CLI, when it plugs into the uh, registry, we use that same configuration to fetch it. So 
I think that's the trend, and I see a lot of projects being open in the issue saying, hey, why you are creating the same proxy so your su support sucks, yeah. right? Use the NPM one. They already figure out how to yeah. start from, get stuff from different places. Um, and most of this stuff use HTTP. Uh, you, can you can force it to HTTPS. Um, also, some things are using use Git, so you can force it to HTTPS, which is more, more proxy friendly than using the Git protocol or SSH and things like that. They're kind of blocked. But yeah, um, we have that problem in IBM, and one of the things that we're looking at is creating our own NPM registry internally inside the firewall, only with the packages that we blessed are, are good or we're using then um, you can switch NPM saying instead of going to npm.js.org, go to npm.ibm.com and I internally or W3, something like that. Um, so these tools handle that very easily because a lot of people don't have access um, to it. Good question. Any more questions? Um, so let me let me show the directory structure. People were asking for that. Um, you see how how do I do this? Um, so I created, this is the directory structure. Let me see if I can. How is that? Um, so Bower components, that stuff that Bower got, the developer doesn't have to mess with that folder. Uh, Bower.json is a file that says what to get. The developer doesn't deal with that. This, this folders, to me, what's new is the convention of where you put your build assets. So in this case, I'm building a web app that gets built here, and a Cordova app that gets here. So this is a directory structure. If we're, you were not using um, my, my generator, you're using Cordova, this is the directory structure you get, and then you put your files in here. But since I am have a, uh, an abstraction layer, I want to create a, a web app that runs on my web server from my website is a mobile site, but also the native side. So I have I have two apps, um, and that was kind of the develop, developer workflow problem that I had. Um, no modules are the all the utilities, so that one developer doesn't have to touch. Uh, profile uh, I may just put this somewhere else. Is a Dojo specific profile how, how it gets built. Um, how it deals with NLS translations, ITN, locales, all those good stuff that uh, enterprise like to support when they pick up a JavaScript framework. And then source, um, app, this is where the app is. So it's very, very simple web app. Um, it has two views, about and home. Um, you can have whatever CSX structure. You can just um, delete this whole folder and put your index.html and your JavaScript and, and this still works. It will build you a mobile web um, app, a, a build your mobile app with whatever web app. So if you have a web app today, just plug it in this folder, run the build, uh, run the simulator, and your app should come out. It's just I happen to have an example for that for that framework for the enterprise. Um, so that's that's the directory structure. Um, wanted to show it here because in I think it's sublime. It's it's difficult to to see it. Where's where's sublime? So that's that's the directory structure I was showing. So if we go to the the app and we want to change something, oh, um, I'm all over the place. Um, the watch task. So the the watch task is um, the one minute scenario. Or more, or two minutes um, is is the longest one. Um, so if you type ground server Cordova, that will build the app, um, run the emulator, and then watch for files. So that's kind of the things that a lot of people use. Some people just use ground just to get this watch task, because if you change one line of file, if you just want to run JS hint or JS lint or CSS hint or HTML hint. Um, or run a Jasmine framework or Mocha, when you change one line of file, this runs fast. So instead of you like changing code and then running compile, you immediately see that you type something or you miss a semicolon or, or something, and it will give you instant feedback. Um, so let's, let's run that one. 
was the command? Grant watch nuclear. You guys can see that. Grant watch and then Cordova. And I think it knows that I already built this thing. Um, so if I bring up the emulator, by the way, I still don't know if it's called simulator or emulator. I don't know if that's a Android versus iOS thing. Um, the guys decided with emulator. And I was freaking out for a week. <laughs> X86. So what? So what happens when I'm running? I'm running this guy on X86 with the Intel accelerator, hardware acceleration because it runs faster. What do I call that one? <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's why. I was, but yeah, that's a good. That's a good logic. I never thought of. Nobody explained like that to me. Good. Um, usually I'm not the, the smartest person in the room, which is good. I'm always learning. Um, so. Uh, we have Sublime, and if we want to see, I don't have. Usually, I don't know you, but um, even if they're cheap monitors, I like to have more than one monitor, 19 inch or 20 inch, because you have your code editor and you have the stuff. So usually, I have another monitor with the emulator and some commands, and then I have coding in one. So for purposes here, so, I, so I'm not hiding anything or. Maybe the demo will go wrong. Um, let's change something on this on this demo. Um, NLS.home is um, by nature they train us to always not put strings directly. NLS, Spanish, English, Japanese, all that stuff. So those NLS files and and they're here, and I can change them. I can change them there. Um, I can change it here. Uh, or I can change it in the HTML file if you feel more comfortable changing the HTML file. Um, so if I um, well, let's change one one at a time so you can see the you can see the change. Let's change change this one and let's whack whack this um, and put def fest here. So if I save it, see the watch task just detected. I change a file. Let me run some node CLI things. And in this case, I have it a rule saying run JS hint or JS lint. And if it fails, if I mistype something or I miss a semicolon, it will just stop in red letters and say, hey, this stuff didn't pass. Um, it will run the dojo build, which takes a long time, it takes like 10 seconds. It's building iOS and it's building Android. Um, and then it's running the emulator. So we should see here like about one minute or two minutes, the emulator. Um, so the CLI, the good thing about the CLI, it will uninstall the app um, and install the app. And if the emulator is not running, it will run the emulator. So at this point, um, I haven't shown the, the bad part or the complex part about the Android IDE or the Xcode IDE or, or all this stuff. So um, so this is like for entry level. You can code um, in web and JavaScript and see changes. Um, so this one took a minute, and then you have no applauses. Hey, hey. <laughs> demo went perfect. Okay, so that's that fast, and that's one minute. Like okay, I have to wait one minute to run it in in uh, in the emulator. Well, in reality, you're Nobody codes like that, right? You put it in the device after you have a certain of confidence that you have built in your web app, and then you put it in the device. So let's do a faster uh, workflow. So the next one is the 15 second um, watch task. And this is like running the JavaScript through the build process, through the Dojo build process, and then running on the web browser. And they have an open task, so let's run that one. That one is, what is this? so it's running the distribution. It's just watching there, 
and let's change something else. Um, let's change one of these um, NLS files. Or this is Spanish. I have Spanish and English uh, as an example. A lot of people, not a lot of people, but some folks want to know, like, how do I deal with translations and NLS when I'm building an app uh, for other countries or other languages? Um, so I can change this JavaScript file to um, change the file. It did the hinting. It's building Dojo. Um, And it should it should open the app, or I should have it open somewhere. Didn't didn't open. Why? Could it be because like in your slideshow you had the server this and in the command you put watch this. Ah, correct. So I run half. See. Out of there, server disk. So this one will just watch and do the command, but it would not serve. So that's that's the difference. Let me see if it's right. Oh, there it is. Good. You were correct. You win a candy somehow. Um, so that's, that's the app, right? More information. If I want to change something in the app, so that, um, let's see how long it takes to build me another version of the app. If I want to change an HTML, a HomeJS, whatever I change in the app, in that folder, it's just watching the folder. But I'm just changing one so um, you can see the, the, let's put the date here. If I switch that, just detected that I changed a file, um, and it's building the, the building the process, compiling everything, moving everything to the distribution. So it just it's just changed. So that was ten seconds. Um, applauses. Yay. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's let's do better than that. Yes. <laughs> Clap. Clap. Um, I don't know where my slides went. I think they're here. Okay. So let's go for the next one. So the next one is the one second one. Oh my God. Okay. So this one is the typical one that when you uh, do the you do grunt or German, you see the examples are the JavaScript frameworks that don't have to compile at all. You can just run it as a web as a static HTML. Um, so I, I manage, with the help of a lot of folks that are experts in Dojo, to figure out how to run this um, without bidding it. So that's kind of the, the beauty of running uh, it. So let's see if we can get one second out of this one. And the command is server, which is the, the, the normal one. When, you do, when you're working with Grunt.js files and people building this stuff, most probably is Grunt build, Grunt server. Um, so I make this one Grunt server. That one went very fast. Let's see how fast can it go if I change a file. Um, should I put, I think I think almost end, so put thank you here to see how long does it take. Half a second. Ah, see, now I got the first, yeah. I was training people. Um, so, that's basically it. Imagine if you have to remember this every day and do it manually, and and then you do it for a week and you're like, I'm awesome, and do it for two weeks, I'm awesome, and then you move to a different project or you go for vacation and then you come back like, how do I run what? And you you forget or somebody wants to like, hey, I'm new to the team, I want to get started. Um, do you have time to help me set up my environment? Like, yo, dude, <laughs> just Joe, dude, and just. Ground server and go do it and then you're done. And then they can see an example and then they can augment it and they can put stuff in there and then share it. So um, you see how I'm doing with time. I'm doing with time. Look. Um, other tasks. So if you just want to do like simple things like lint um, to see if something's wrong, um, you can do that. 
or ground build and server disk. Um, I think it was watch. Um, you can do things like that, and that those things are. This is running. That's the beauty of Node. It's like optimized to the hell. Like these things run very fast. So if I want to link all my JavaScript files, I can have a hundred files. This thing doesn't care. It runs very fast. Um, that's it. it. Just finished. She so linked it on my file, so you check if I have like a missing column or a JSON file. I have an extra comma, comma which is like common, right? Um, and by the way, this this linting tools are like plugins for everything in every editor out there for Sublime, for IDEs, for Eclipse, for Beam, for Emacs. Use them. They're there to help you. We're not perfect coders. I'm not a perfect coder. Um, uh, Oh, today speaks um, Cordova.io um, is the website to get more information. Um, local meetups. Um, if you want to learn about web development, developer, I find it useful to learn from other people. Um, so I go to a lot of meetups. I try to go to a lot of meetups locally here in Raleigh. Do we have a lot? Um, or where you live, try to look for them. Uh, videos. I have to say, JSConf, if you look for not, nothing against Google, Google was like my top one. But lately, JSConf is putting all their video conferences from JS, JSConf EU, JSConf USA. They are building like a massive ja um, JavaScript web development CSS library in YouTube. And every other day, they put like three more videos. So it's becoming a good library, like what YUY Theater was three years ago. Um, so that's a, a big um, fluent velocity. Uh, conference and videos, if you're getting started in web development, I, I recommend those. And Review.js is the utility that I use to create these slides using HTML5. Um, that's it. Uh, questions or? Yes. Those, all those packages you download through that uh, browser, so Bower was used for the download the web assets, JavaScript, HTML libraries, right. uh, NPM for the null modules. Oh no, no, I'm um, I can connect. Actually, I didn't show, um, but you can also connect your devices through the IP address. That, that watch task will also work on devices. So you have a few devices on a table, and you change one line of code, you can see all the devices changing. Um, but to run on the device, just plug a USB cable, and the app gets compiled as a binary. So that's what gets moved to the device, the output. The, the app doesn't download all those packages and everything. This is just for your workspace. Um, one thing that I have to mention that I mentioned was um, everything that I did, I did it locally. So you have to install, at least download it and put it in your path, the Android SDK. Um, but the tool will t tell you, like, identify Android SDK on the path, please download it. Or Xcode, which is very easy to find on the App Store, Mac App Store. Uh, download Xcode, and I think run it once, and then you're, you're set. Um, same, so you need the IDEs for the BlackBerry 10, like those IDEs. Um, you don't have to use them, as I showed today, but you have to have them in here, because those are the compilers. I have the compilers for the specific device. Uh, one thing that Fonga provides is you don't have to have them. So basically, it runs kind of the same process and builds your app. Um, well, builds the directory structure and then sends that to their cloud service, which is one free app um, per account. Um, you want more, then you pay. Um, but it's good enough to, to try it out. And then they will build the app for Windows 8 or for Mac. You don't have a Mac, right? Not everybody has a Mac when they get started. And they will build the app uh, for iPhone, for iPad, give you a QR code or URL that you take a picture, and then the app gets installed on your phone. Yeah, that's building if you don't have, like, a Mac. Um, if you do an iOS for Android, Windows, Ubuntu, or Linux, you can do that. That's the example. I did the example of, of Android because Android runs everywhere. You can do Android development on Mac, Linux, and Pixel, I believe, with some yeah, I um, mode. The guys at Google told me. Um, 
and I didn't know, like, for the longest time, like, oh, there's a Linux mode that you enable and that you can run, like, good, okay. Yeah. So I'm going to, I don't have a, uh, no, I said Pixel, but I meant a Google Chrome. Chromebook yeah. or Chrome, Chrome OS. You can do development for mobile and Android and Linux and those stuff. The what? It depends what type of application you're doing. So if you're doing a productivity app, uh, putting forms, getting information from the web, saving information with the camera, um, doing a an app that you don't have a lot of skills in native development for enterprise, an internal app that needs to run that needs to run on Android and iOS and blah blah all the devices, hybrid is good enough. If you're building something that is like this is the app that's going to make your startup or make your app your, your company um, and it's a game and it needs like smooth scrolling and, and this is where you're going to base your company on, then native and, and then they have to get gain those skills of uh, native. So it depends what app you have, what skills you have. Um, but the browser is, get, is getting pretty good. People are getting uh, doing performance. KitKat just announced that you can do Chrome View apps, and that's something that we're going to look in Cordova to include that Chrome View instead of the stock Android View. That sometimes make Cordova looks slow on Android devices, and that's the reason. But KitKat got announced, and they have now the Chrome View that we're going to hack on it to see if we can use it to build hybrid apps and get better performance. Better accessibility also is another concern. But it depends what type of um, platforms you're targeting. Um, yeah, good question. Everybody asks that. Um, also, they ask, like, which JavaScript framework they should use? Ba uh, Backbone, Angular, Polymer, jQuery, Dojo. Which one is the best one? Well, it depends. Yep. Can you reverse an APK file with this? Will it unpackage it? That you manipulate it? Uh, we're behind the scenes in this Cordova app. I had an APK file. Could I just open it up in that Cordova program? Can I open that file and then manipulate it? Or make changes to it? And then close it back? And then we package it and upload it? That's a pain in the butt. I what, guess what you can. What if you had a client, though, that wanted you to change something specific? You would need, you you need the source code, I guess. But you don't have the source code, so they stole the app, and you wanted to change it. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm using the tool to make the app, or whatever. So I don't have the APK file until I download it from the server. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't have to download the APK file. I just have to download the app and use it. Yeah. 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 Yeah
this is the a valid um, Xcode project, and then if you have someone that knows how to use those IDEs, or you want to use those IDEs to debug and things like that, got more advanced or tricky bugs, um, it's open. Like open it up, and then you get Xcode. Um, for example, you you open that, and it opens Xcode, and then you can run, build, debug everything. Yeah, that's something new that came out in three. I didn't mention it, but if you see these merges folder, so if you have specific things for under iOS file base, CSS, like you have a CSS for the web, CSS for Android, CSS for iOS, you put them here, and then the build process will pick up based on the platforming, so you get the Android look and feel or the iOS look and feel. Uh, I don't know if you or some, something like that. Um, yes. Oh, no, no. They don't get overwritten. Um, if you, it depends on the ground JS file. So the correct command would blow it away, or the clean command would blow it away. But after you have a good project, I think you just build, 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 and then you're just rebuilding the app with new files. Um, also, user agent um, detection. So if you're iOS or Android, then you do if statements to see in your front end web development. And something we have done uh, on some other app that I did for IBM, uh, we use Cordova APIs. There's a device plugin that you can actually get if I'm using an iPad 2 or an iPad 3 or iPad Air, like those specific that sometimes don't show up in the uh, user agent. Then uh, if you use Cordova, you have access to the JavaScript, and it gives you back like the OS version. If it's an iPad second gen, like that, those specific things for or Android. Um, because sometimes the user agent, the browser won't give you that specific information. But with Cordova, you just call a JavaScript, there's a global variable, uh, global object, and has that information. So that's the device plugin. And that's most of the most popular plugins, the device plugin. And also the file access. If you want to save files, read files, save, take a picture, save it, save it. The file plugin is one of the also most popular plugins. Um, if you want to know more about the plugins, there's a plugin registry here. So um, BlackBerry put theirs in there. As you can see, the uh, Chromium should be somewhere here. I don't see them now. Oh, here is the Chromium ones, and then the Apache Cordova ones. So this is just native code that is accessible from JavaScript. That's that's why I say it depends. If you want like native to do native things, they might be available here, and you don't have to write in a native. It's already written for you, like media capture, file access. Um, the Chromium ones, like the Chromium sockets, is a pretty cool one. I don't know if you guys want to see a demo, but this is Michael Mogni. He's on the Apache Cordova team. Um, so he built an app on iPhone. I think for Android it's the same thing. Development. So using the Chrome.socket API, um, you can show it. And, and these videos are in the PhoneGap uh, YouTube library. So that's in Waterloo, Canada. So right now he's showing with the iPhone. Do you have speakers there? So that's a that's a web app using the Chrome package socket IO I connected to Node, connected to the Notebot father doctor. And using the accelerometer accelerometer or no, yeah to detect how he's moving the phone to control the phone. And this is web development. This is a web web developer guy. So it's kind of doing kind of native things and it's responsive. So I don't have one yet. So when I get one of those guys or I, I collect enough tips to buy one, I'll do a demo. So but the, the, uh, the Google guys are behind this Apache Cordova project. So um, 
this is a repository that you know, it's on your I think he's saying the same thing for the repository here, the plugins, Google is working on it, Blackberry is working on this stuff. Red Hat is uh, building a JBoss IDE, very cool, um, to create apps and IBM is behind it. Um, so it's, the web is moving forward, not as fast as we want to, but um, I think there's, there's space for that kind of apps. Any questions? So if, if you compile the new code and you can generate it to different platforms like Android and uh, so and if you change on the bottom like someone developed the native code in the ISO folder and you have new code come in, it you say that not going to be over written, right? So his question is, if someone goes inside your Android folder, you know, in some folder, you change something there, and if you have new code from your own app code, um, you know, that going to overwrite what you change oh, there. Yeah, so the, the directory structure, the way it works is it gets merged. So um, at the end of the day, you put your common web code, in this folder, you put your web app common code that goes for Android, all the platforms in that one. It's, it's, it's a matter of what folder do you put the files in so they don't get clobbered. Um, if you put the files in the Android folder, then it means that file is only for Android. Or if you put it in the iOS folder, that file is only for iOS. And then have another folder which is for both, which is your most of your files, right? So you have pictures that are both your images folder. Uh, we have the pictures here, um, or um, I think the app, my app sits here. So if I have views, I have images. That's a file that I was sharing for Android and iOS, but I have it once, so I can test it on Chrome view, I, on Chrome and de debug and develop on the browser. Always try to develop on have a live version of your app always running on the browser. So you can develop more on the browser and deploy on the on the phone. Yeah, separate folder. Okay? So, thank you.